Now one, one of my newest projects I'm working on right now is this um, Sony Tektronics 305 DMM oscilloscope. It's kind of a, basically this is the, what you would get for a portable scope in about 1978 or 1979. It's actually fairly large for a portable scope, but that's that was portability at that time. And on the oscilloscope side, it's basically completely dead. Um, I'm not going to plug this thing in because when I did, I was getting a little bit of smoke from somewhere. I couldn't figure out where, so I'm going to have to tread somewhat lightly on this. But um, the DMM part seemed to work pretty good. And I actually had it running long enough that I was testing the DMM. Originally, I didn't get any smoke anywhere in it. I saw a little bit curling up and yanked the plug real quick and said, oh crap, and haven't plugged it in since. I'll have to get out my Variac and my uh, current meter and maybe plug it in and see what happens later on. But it's kind of a nice little unit. I guess reasonably compact for 1978, huge for today for a... Um, portable meter oscilloscope but the uh, smoke was emanating from in here which happens to be the power supply board so I'm going to yank this charger board out of there I took the battery pack out the battery showed doesn't matter if you try and charge or not it shows zero volts it's long gone so I'm going to plug this thing in maybe with the Variac and try and take a few readings. Luckily on the internet there's a full manual to this thing with schematics and everything else including voltages so I can take a few key voltages and run my Variac up some and keep an eye on the current meter. If the current starts to spike then spin it back down and try and figure out what the heck's going on with this thing. But I suppose first what I probably ought to do is pull this battery charger board out and take the power supply board and start doing a little bit of testing. I did do a little bit of probing around in some of these tandem capacitors because of, sometimes they can be a bit failure prone in these years and they were measuring I don't know it's kind of hard to tell on the writing on there. I have the writing on that is plus 68 A16 and that's it. So I don't know if that's 68 microfarad, 16 volt. I kind of doubt it because right beside it there's 160 volt aluminum electrolytics. So 16 might be 160 volt. But if those are 68 microfarad tantalums in circuit, they were measuring around 500 microfarads, which with my older 80 style capacitance meter like this Tenma that I've got, it tells you if you're measuring a way higher capacitance than expected, then it's a possibility that the capacitors are leaky. And I've got a couple older iTube leakage testers that I might try and hook one of those tan ohms up to and just maybe test it on the lowest voltage. I think the lowest one that I have goes down to 25 volts. I'm pretty certain by the looks of where those are in the circuit. There's more than 25 volts being fed to those tantalums, so I'm going to do a little bit of disassembly and troubleshooting, see if I can't figure out what's going on with this. And I know back behind here where these two mounting screws are is where the high voltage transformer is. I'm doing some research on the internet, it seems like that is a um, fairly failure prone unit where it's at it's even though it's mounted on this heat sink or well not really heat sink just this aluminum chassis there's not much airflow that can get around that thing and I guess they supposedly overheat and they go bad quite regularly so I don't know if that's what's going on I do know that there's several more of these on eBay with basically the same problem so it's starting to make me wonder if that's not it but I'm going to do a little more troubleshooting before I just 
condemn it for that. If that is the case, it's not worth fixing because the cheapest, I guess they're really hard to find because they go bad so often. The cheapest one I could find was $54, and I'm not putting $54 into this. It's just not going to happen. I'll just turn around and flip it on eBay for somebody if they have one they need parts for, they can have it. But, yeah, it might end up being a nice little scope.